Hey there, Black Sheep. Welcome back to the channel. In this series, we normally analyze the weekly study edition of the Watchtower that Jehovah's Witnesses will be studying over the weekend, and we highlight how it implements the bite model. If you're unfamiliar with the bite model, it's the go-to method used to identify extreme control groups and cults and the methods that they use to coerce, manipulate, recruit, and maintain control of their members. This week, however, we will not be doing an episode of This Bites. I'm not exactly sure what this is an episode of. Maybe we'll call it Thoughts and Feelings. This weekend, Jehovah's Witnesses will not have a Watchtower study. This is because it's the memorial. Just this past weekend, the 16th and 17th of March, Jehovah's Witnesses studied Article 2, of the January 2024 Watchtower Study Edition. The article was entitled, Are You Ready for the Most Important Day of the Year? As we're preparing for the most important meeting of the year, the memorial, which will be held on Sunday, March 24th. The article details the one and only Jehovah's Witness sanctioned holiday. There are no gifts or decorations and all 45 minutes of the celebration is spent sitting in your special new outfit, mostly in silence, not drinking the provided wine or eating the only snacks in the room. This will be celebrated globally on the night of March 24th. Most of the article was used to appeal to the emotions of the reader and had a lot of emotional manipulation. However, there wasn't much use of the bite model. The only use of the bite model that I noticed was information control. Information control. Extensive use of cult-generated information and propaganda, including newsletters, magazines, journals, audio tapes, videotapes, YouTube, movies, and other media. This form of information control, I noticed, was used 11 times in this article. So I wanted to do something I don't normally do with you guys. I wanted to just talk to you and share my thoughts and feelings about this most important day of the year. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that each year the memorial lines up with the Last Supper, and at the memorial they read the scriptures that correspond with the details of that night. They pray over the bread, pass it around, and they pray about the wine, and then pass it around. You're not meant to eat or drink either. In Jehovah's Witness doctrine, only those chosen by God himself to be in a covenant with Jesus and rule as kings and priests in heaven over the earth are allowed to partake of the wine and the bread. According to the Jehovah's Witness doctrine, the scripture in Revelation says that the number of chosen ones is 144,000. How do you and I know who is anointed or how someone is chosen, they tell you that they are. And no surprise, but all of these men in the governing body are part of that elite group, just a bunch of old white guys from mostly America or Europe, and they're one token. The local brothers, men in attendance at the congregations all over the world, will count and report any people who partake in the emblems. That just means eat or drink the wine or bread. They, they do this so that the organization can keep track of how many around the world are claiming to be anointed part of this chosen group. In these local cases, the person is either quietly revered or dismissed as stubborn and crazy. But when it comes to the governing body, everybody just believes them. This year, many inactive, disfellowshipped, disassociated former Jehovah's Witnesses, including myself, have been contacted by 
either their family or former friends or elders. Some people, after not having heard from them in years. And this is all because the governing body has changed some rules regarding shunning. You're still technically shunned. The Jehovah's Witnesses are still not encouraged to socialize with you or break bread with you. But they can say hi and send you some propaganda. So that's nice. What if a disfellowship person comes to a congregation meeting? Under our current arrangement, we don't say a greeting to individuals who've been removed from the congregation. However, the governing body has decided that publishers can use their Bible-trained conscience to decide whether to give a simple greeting and welcome a disfellowshipped individual who attends a congregation meeting. Hi. So good to see you here. Thank you. So, should you attend the memorial? When I was a believing Jehovah's Witness, over the years I was able to convince certain quote-unquote worldly family members to attend with me. I even had a whole row of family one time and I was so proud. I am overwhelmingly grateful that none of them converted. So while I personally would not recommend going, there are some circumstances where I would say maybe it's worth it. For instance, if you left under circumstances where you weren't in control of when you left or who started shunning you, if you think that enduring the 45 minutes of memorial, maybe some chilly hellos, you can endure those things to get a few hugs, a few hellos, and a few final goodbyes, then I would say do it for the closure. Otherwise, hardcore pass. Now let's talk about what is being memorialized. Jesus Christ's sacrifice. I've said before on this channel that I'm not going to debate doctrine or scripture because I'm not here to tell anyone what to believe. This episode may be personal. It's one of the things that I brought up in my judicial committee. It's cool with me if you believe in the Bible or if you have faith in Jesus, and as long as it makes you the best you and brings you peace and you're not hurting every anyone, that's fine, that's great, I'm happy for you. But everything from here on out is my reasoning and my opinions. My argument is that Jesus didn't have to die, and definitely not in the violent and sadistic way that he did. God makes the rules, so clearly this is what he wanted. The Jehovah's Witnesses say the reason Jesus needed to be the sacrifice was because Adam was a perfect man. So a perfect man could be the only price to repay mankind's debt, as explained in this Caleb and Sophia video made for child indoctrination. Thank you so much for your visit. See you later, Sister Elsa. Mom, is Elsa gonna die? Oh. We don't know yet. Can't Jehovah just fix her? Oh, do you remember who he sent? Jesus? But how does that help her now? Hmm. Hmm. This one asks too many questions. We must spend extra time punishing, I mean, brainwash, I mean, studying. Yes. We must spend extra time studying with this one. That was my very bad impression of Caleb and Sophia's father. Do you remember how long Adam was supposed to live? Forever! But then he didn't listen to Jehovah and ruined everything. Since we are all Adam's children, that means we also get sick, old, and eventually die. But what hope did Jehovah give us? 
He sent Jesus to give his life in place of the one that Adam lost. How could he do that? Because he was perfect like Adam, but he obeyed Jehovah. Yes. Thanks to Jehovah for giving us Jesus as the ransom. Now we all have the hope of living forever in paradise. So hear me out. Noah could have been the sacrifice. Noah preached, just like Jesus had a ministry. Noah obeyed God, just like Jesus did. He was chosen to survive a cataclysmic world-ending flood to start mankind anew. This could have been the end of suffering and the end to the question of Jehovah's sovereignty because, according to the scriptures, Noah was faultless in the eyes of Jehovah. Uh, Noah was imperfect, right? But from Jehovah's standpoint, he was faultless. Though committing errors and wrongs because of their fleshly imperfection, such faithful men nevertheless manifested a complete heart toward Jehovah. Thus, within the limits possible for them to attain, their devotion was complete, sound, satisfying the divine requirements in their case. Since God, the judge, was pleased with their worship, no human or spirit creature could rightly find fault with them. But you say, Noah was an imperfect man. He may have been found faultless in Jehovah's eyes, but he was imperfect. Mm -hmm. And we have to have a perfect man to do this. Okay. According to Jehovah's Witness doctrine, after another mm -hmm. cataclysmic world-ending event, which will again kill most everyone on mm -hmm. earth except God's chosen Jehovah's Witnesses. Are you seeing a pattern here? After that, there will be Judgment Day. Judgment Day is a thousand years. When, though, does Judgment Day begin? How long does it last? The book of Revelation shows that Judgment Day begins after the War of Armageddon, when Satan's system on earth will be destroyed. After Armageddon, Satan and his demons will be imprisoned in an abyss for a thousand years. During that time, the 144,000 heavenly joint heirs will be judges and will rule as kings with the Christ for 1,000 years. Revelation 20, 1-4 Judgment Day is not some hurried event lasting a mere 24 hours. It lasts a thousand years. Thus, individuals will be judged on the basis of what they do during Judgment Day. By the end of Judgment Day, Surviving humans will have come to life fully as perfect humans. Revelation 20, verse 5. Judgment Day will thus see the restoration of mankind to its original perfect state. Noah could have died perfect, loyal, and peacefully, thus fulfilling the price of the ransom and avoiding all the violence, preventing all the world wars so far, all the pandemics, all the genocides. But instead, God said, you know what, actually, I'll just have my only begotten son be betrayed, beaten, tortured, and murdered, and maybe I'll just wait another, like, a millennia or so before I bring about an end to human suffering. So that's the end of my reasoning. Again, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. That's just how I feel about it. It doesn't make sense to me. I think a whole bunch of suffering could have been prevented if I believed in any of this. But lastly, I would like to address the governing body update. The governing body has decided that sisters may choose to wear slacks when participating in the ministry and when attending Christian meetings, assemblies, and conventions. The governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. No scripture, no full segment of reasoning on the change like they did when they changed their mind on men wearing beards. Just the governing body has decided. We decided like it was never a big deal. Cecilia was attending meetings regularly, but instead of a skirt, she wore pants to the meeting. 
So I chatted to Nancy, a sister who at the time was accompanying me to her study most weeks, so that we could try and figure out a way of helping her to make the change she needed to make. It took about a year of gently showing pictures, reviewing the Bible principles, but eventually she did get the point. One of the weekends that she was staying over, I went into her room and on her bed, neatly laid out, was a skirt and top ready for the meeting. I thanked Jehovah at that point because finally our patience had been rewarded. Just, uh, just ignore that, you know? Those sisters who spent so much time wearing down that poor woman's spirit until she finally gave in to their peer pressure. Let's just, let's just breeze on past that. All of that because these allegedly chosen guys took a vote and changed their mind. They decided. They said so themselves. They're not divinely inspired nor infallible. So if and when they make a mistake, they said they don't have to apologize. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. Just ask yourself, who are you really following? The governing body has decided. Well, that's all for my thoughts and feelings this week. Next week, we'll be back to this bite and we'll be analyzing. I'm not an angry apostate, but sometimes anger is justified. Sometimes when you see manipulation and lies, you can get angry for your loved ones who are still being controlled and deceived. You can be angry for yourself, for the time that you too were just like them. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for listening. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to attend the memorial or how many years it's been since you last did. 2018 was my last memorial. No looking back. Remember the wife of Lot. If you enjoyed our time here today, please give the video a like and subscribe. Continue thinking freely, black sheep.